We are the Yara Bros, also known as Nomadic Wander. You guys, we've been on the road for a little bit more than three years now, so we thought it's high time we tell you why we left America. Mm -hmm. And why we never plan on ever living there again. Never ever? Never ever. Never, never ever. ever. <laughs> Uh, we're not bashing America, but we're telling the facts how we see it through our eyes. And by no means are we denouncing or planning on giving up our citizenship. We still have a lot of love and respect for our home country. Real talk, man. Uh, the American ways, the fabric of America is what makes me, uh, gives me a lot of the positive attributes that I have as a man. So, in no way are we denouncing America, but we about to get into the reasons that we left. Um, and why we will never ever be coming back. You ready? Yeah. Let's do this. All right, you guys. First off, at the top of the list, uh, we're going to talk about that USD, the almighty dollar. Um, we just find it beneficial to leverage the power of the USD abroad. Mm -hmm. We found a bit of a cost of living life hack, and that is being able to earn the US dollar while living in a country whose cost of living is lower than the US. That is just like sweet poetry. You work less and do more with your dollar. You're able to stretch it out mm -hmm. uh, uh, and enjoy life more without spending your life's blood uh, uh, getting that USD. Uh, so again, earning the US dollar while in a foreign country, the cost of living is lower than, helps you to live a much better, more fulfilling life. And for us, it's helped us save a lot more than we were ever able to save in the US, especially since we don't have any fixed expenses or any of the variable expenses that we used to have while living in the States. Break that down in layman's terms. We ain't got no car note, we ain't got no car insurance, we ain't got no health insurance to pay. All these other kind of extra expenses that you have in America that you got to pay uh, uh, to stay afloat, to survive and, and, and survive in the States. Um, we don't have. So all of that extra cash, we get to put into our bank accounts and put into our uh, improving our quality of life. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so that's number one. Hand in hand with cost of living is health care. A lot of people don't know what it's like to receive health care out of their home country and for us out of the U.S. I mean, it can be scary. Yeah, it can. It can be really scary. Um, but there is a term called medical tourism. Mm -hmm. And you better believe that thousands of Americans choose to travel to a different country to receive health care. Do you know why? because you can receive health care outside of your home country that is of the same or higher quality, receive the same care, and that is provided in state-of-the-art facilities similar to, equal to, or even better than what you would receive in the U.S. for a fraction of the cost. I need mean to break that down, for a fraction of the cost and a fraction of the headache. Got my grill done outside of the States for cheap, and I got a copy of everything that they did, and it was all broken down to me. It's just much more convenient and a lot less expensive to get it done outside of the United States. So much so that we choose to live in countries where we can pay out of pocket for health care and receive the same or higher quality. That's what's up, man. So uh, health care goes hand in hand with cost of living, and that is our number two reason for getting out of Dodge. I'm, I'm living my best life. I ain't going back and forth with you. That's what's up, yo. Quality of life, y'all. Quality of life. This this might be our number one reason for leaving the United States of America. Um, I want to live my best life while I am still young. And able and in our right mind and with the finances to do so. Straight up. If I see a mountain that I want to climb, I'm going to just be able to say, oh, that's such a beautiful mountain. I want to be able to climb that mountain. Straight up. What's the use of a Cadillac when you're 90 years old? You know what I mean? Um, we are trying to live our best lives. And living outside the United States allows us to leverage our dollar and truly live the best life that we can. And for me, um, and for a lot of people, you have your version of what the American dream looks like. Mm -hmm. And my dream is a little bit different. It doesn't require that I live in America. Um, it's the freedom to be able to travel and to experience, be fully immersed in different cultures, to learn from those cultures, and to live extensively in other countries. I, I don't know what other people's dreams are. Uh, my dream has always been to touch my feet on different soil all around the earth to see God's great creation. Period. I'm talking about since I was a little kid, you know what I mean? Um, and as I grew up as a black man in America, 
Oh, America gave me so many more different reasons to get the hell out of Dodge. Um, so in order to live my best life and to seek out the best lands for me to live, we are traveling the world looking to live our best life and living our best life while we're seeking uh, that ideal location. Reason number three <laughs> for moving outside of the United States and never ever returning um, is seek we are seeking our best lives, you guys. Another reason we left the U.S. was to get away from the massive bombardment of mm. political rhetoric that is spewed day and night and on all media sources in the U.S. Rapid fire style, there is a bombardment of polarizing political issues, making shit political that ain't even political, you know what I'm saying? Uh, right, making right and wrong a red or blue issue, mm -hmm. uh, like wearing a mask or not wearing a mask, you know what I mean? Right. Um, but. That's just a microcosm. It is a consistent and constant bombardment of these things uh, mm -hmm. uh, that, that really take effect in your psyche. Right, at the workplace, right? At the workplace, in the checkout line, uh, uh, wherever <laughs> you are. Place. They tell you that uh, you never talk about religion or politics, right, to be polite. But in America, everything is politicized. So if you're not talking about that, then you talk about your dinner or a ham sandwich, you know, which did you eat for lunch yesterday. Yeah. Um, and I would say um, our, the first country moved abroad to was China. And even though uh, we really didn't feel like China was a good fit, mm -hmm. um, it did provide a silver lining because once we got behind China's great firewall, we really didn't have access to a lot of the media that um, you can so easily consume back in the U.S. And it did wonders for our mental health. We didn't know what the hell y'all was going through we, for a minute. <laughs> and we had peace in that. You know what I'm saying? We were living our best lives. Uh, so the, uh, another reason to move abroad is to escape the uh, constant assault on your mental psyche uh, by the media in America. The way of the gun, the wild wild west, uh, uh, vigilante justice, all this stuff is like romanticized violence from America. Um, there is no place that we have lived that's more violent than America. So another reason that we left America is straight up violence. Um, I have witnessed uh, hyper-violent acts uh, uh, on individuals from junior high school all the way up to my adulthood, through my adulthood. I've been a part of, of, of violent acts. Um, in my mind, it is not possible to escape violence in America. Yep, that's true. Um, and I would even say for me, I lived in Orlando at the time that the horrible uh, shooting massacre happened at the nightclub. Only 10 minutes away, a route that I passed going to work every day and having to see um, the horrible aftermath that was there, having to see all of those that were affected um, from that massacre. And like school shootings, massacres are like a normal occurrence in America. Thankfully, they've taken a break, mostly due to the pandemic, but it's something that a lot of people um, Sadly, I would say come to expect or you're not super surprised if you hear that another one has happened. Living on guard, uh, understanding that if you go out to the mall or to a club at any given moment in time, you need to know where the exits are at because something could actually go down, like realistically speaking, um, is an assault on your psyche um, and it, that is uh, terrorism. Um, and we won't even mention like being black in America, knowing that if I get pulled over, I could get popped. Uh, knowing that if I go for a jog in the morning uh, uh, with my hoodie on, I may not come home. Uh, uh, there's just an endless assault on your psychological well-being uh, that is due to the extreme violence of the American way of life. So, violence in America is another reason we put that puppy in the review. I would definitely say that I felt safer living in other countries mm -hmm. than I have li living in America. And that is just a really sad truth. Um, but I'm gonna say that, but it's just the facts. It is, it is what it is. And um, a lot of people, um, if you're planning to move abroad, some people might say, oh, you're moving where? Don't they do this here? Don't they do that there? Oh my God, is it safe? Have you watched the news lately? <laughs> Real talk. <laughs> um, but there are not the acts of extreme violence that take place on a regular basis in America happening in other civilized countries. It don't. It just doesn't happen. So, um, again, the violence that we witness, that we see, uh, that we are faced to uh, 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 deal with in America, we don't have to face abroad. And that is a sincerely deep peace of mind that we carry with us as we travel.
Look, we don't want to end this without saying, uh, without big up in America. You know, I am American. I am from America. You know what I'm saying? Hip hop, jazz, rock and roll, movies, all these things. Mm -hmm. Including black people. Are, are, are major things that we send out around the globe and are well received. The influence of pop culture on the world level is massive. Uh, and we get to walk in that influence as we travel. Mm -hmm. And like you said, we're not like, we're not beating up, we're not talking down about America, we're telling what the truths are, but uh, it's a place that we will always come back and visit because our family and our friends, our loved ones are in America, so is Target and Chick-fil-A. <laughs> she went there. Um, <laughs> so we'll be back for you. Um, the, the other attributes of Amer <laughs> the American real life is the optimism, you know what I'm saying? You can take loss over and over and over again and believe that you're gonna be able to bounce back. That's that American way of thinking. That's that American confidence. Folks. Straight up. That, uh, what? Um, also, the uh, 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 diversity that exists inside of America. As we travel around the globe, we don't see people with a, with a prejudiced eye. You know what I mean? Because where we come from, we, there are many different races and many different people uh, together. Mm -hmm. uh, so when we travel the globe, we're not taken aback by any, okay, by almost any uh, cultural influences or anything. Culture, cultural shock is real, but it's not that deep with us. Well, I think in traveling also like opened our eyes to uh, a wider, broader understanding. Yeah, of squatty potty blew my mind. <laughs> Um, um, one thing that we have noticed um, living abroad, uh, traveling abroad, is that there is uh, there is a respect almost, there is a sort of power that comes with holding the American passport. Mm. One that fluency. Right. Yeah. One that we never experienced or got a taste of until we left America. Right. We ain't, you don't get respected till you leave. You understand what I'm saying? A prophet is not respected in his hometown. A black man is not respected in his home country. <laughs> Real talk, man. As we travel the globe, that American passport carries weight. Uh, um, as soon as we open our mouths and they find out that we are American, we are treated much differently, uh, for better or for worse. We reap those benefits, and we appreciate that. Yeah, it's a bit bizarre, like when you first kind of experience it, mm -hmm. but then you realize, oh, you're American, and then it's like Obama. Straight up. Or Straight it's, what did you think of Trump? Oh like, Jesus, yeah. Strength of the American passport, strength of, of USD, of US dollar, um, all these things are, are things that we leverage as we move abroad. So this, these are tools in our toolkit to live a better life. What about you guys? Uh, you guys that are subscribed to us, you guys that are watching the video, let us know in the comments, have you left your country to live abroad? Would you return? If you wouldn't, tell us why. What yeah, are you man. looking for in your travels? Shoot, tell us where. <laughs> where you want to go, where you been, where do you plan on going, where do you believe life is good, you know what I'm saying? We are about the seat of our pants, we do a little research, but we are learning as we are traveling. Mm -hmm. uh, so you got information for us. If you know some good places we need to hit up, let us know. Yep, we'll be taking notes. Straight up, hit us in the comments, y'all. But guys, thank you for joining us, uh, listening to us talk today about why uh, we just choose to live abroad versus living in America. And why we will never be returning, never, ever, ever returning to America. Um, if you guys enjoyed this video, why don't y'all do us a favor? Give us that thumbs up. Please, and if you haven't subscribed, hit, hit that, that subscribe, subscribe button, button. Guys. We appreciate you. Thank you guys for, for listening to us rattle on. Uh, my name is Rondell. I'm April. We are Nomadic Wonder, and we are out.